Before we get started today, I wanted to talk to you about two things. The first one is, before I started this podcast, it was a blog. Now, back in May 2017, I started my comic blog that you see every day that I post on the site. Just recently, the first four months have been released as a paperback book. You can read about it from day one, May 1st, the day that we found out that my wife was diagnosed with breast cancer. The book is a collection of those daily posts from May through August of 2017. So if you're interested, go to AmericanBandito.com slash book. That's AmericanBandito.com slash book. It's also available on Amazon and in the Comixology app. And also, I wanted to tell you about Sticker Mule. Now, Sticker Mule is a place where you can upload your artwork and get stickers and buttons and more printed with your logo on it. It's where I get my American Bandito stickers made. But right now, if you go to AmericanBandito.com slash Sticker Mule, click on the link, sign up for Sticker Mule, and you get $10 towards your first order. So go to AmericanBandito.com slash Sticker Mule and get $10 towards the stickers of your own logo or whatever you have. Shipping is also free, AmericanBandito.com slash Sticker Mule. Now here's the show. I'm Tom Ray, and this is American Bandito. One of the things you have to do as an artist is something I hate, but it's pretty important. Writing your bio. Telling people what you do and how you do it, it's just so hard to define. It's just who you really are. Me, I'm the kind of guy that writes it, puts it out there and then see if it works or else I'll hesitate and never show anyone. I'll just keep on second guessing it. This podcast, for instance. When I reached out to people, I rewrote my concept almost every time I spoke with someone. I eventually came up with what I was doing as I did it. A minimum viable product. Or what I like to call the day after test. Like, do I still like it the next day? Or did people seem to respond to it? So what do you do when you have something you want people to come check out, like these local shops do? And how do you promote something like that? And on top of that, where do you find the people to tell them about it? That leads to my question this week. How do you tell your story and promote it? people ask what you do, you need to tell them something. How do you explain to them that it's more than just what they think it is off the top of their head? Demetrius says that the Yellow Rose Gallery is more than just a gallery. And Micah says even the gallery part of it is a little untraditional. We only don't just concentrate on artworks. Um, we had a, a, a guest speaker, which his name is Robert Verhelst, and he's a motivational speaker. Depending on the type of events that we're doing, we want to tailor it to that event. Plus, we also do sp spoken word artists. But then on top of that, then we also have uh, DJs and music. So again, we're really trying to give an art gallery a different feel than any other art gallery in Madison, Wisconsin, or in the United States in that sense. We want to stand out, so we are always open-minded to different types of ideas that, again, that is going to help people understand the importance of art and culture. We don't pose like unnecessary restrictions on people's artwork. It doesn't have to be framed. It doesn't have to follow all those restrictions like other art galleries. Some of the artists that I've talked to have actually mentioned how the worst part of what they have to do is finding frames for things. Mm -hmm. One guy just said, I'm not handy. And I was like, I hear you, man. Framing is expensive. Yeah. You know, a lot of artists could spend their money on more important things. So when people say they would like to do something here or submit things, it's really just the membership for the community, mm -hmm. present their stuff, and then you're like, great, bring it on over. Mm -hmm. Do you know what the fee is right now? Uh, right now, we are charging $20 a month. You are considered to be a member of the Yellow Rose Gallery. Um, and you don't have to be an artist to be a part of the Yellow Rose Gallery. You can still be a member of the Yellow Rose Gallery and help us out, you know, and still pay $5 um, just to be a member. Is the membership mainly in title or like the old saying, does membership have benefits? Membership has benefits. Okay. Yeah. Um, the membership votes people onto the board of directors. Oh, how many people are on the board? That's a good question. I think we're at eight. Nice. Mia from Stone Fence thinks that being a store specifically for artists helps get the word around. I fortunately haven't had to get the word out there too much. I think they like that we are more artist-based. You know, I really want them to succeed with their, with their artwork here. And 
I think that they like that it's more of a give and take rather than hang your stuff on the wall and I'm going to take 75% of it if it sells. So I, I think that they do like it. It's a good relationship. And because I, I used to do art and I know what it's like to be on the other end. I like that you also add the experience of you know how much it might go for and you would suggest that to them just because mm -hmm. they're putting their stuff out there and going, this is what it's worth. And you know, like, well, I know people will buy it for this much. Madison is not Chicago or New York. No. And people get friends whispering in their ears, like, you could sell that for thousands of dollars. Not here. No. You hate to tell somebody that, but you also want it to sell for we them. Here's a question. Who came up with the logo? My neighbor. Really? And my best friend, Sandy. <laughs> oh, it was just something she said, how about this? Or you had something I came to her and I said, Sandy, I need a logo. And so we, you know, she came up with some ideas and we brainstormed and landed on this, which in hindsight is funny. I don't know if you've ever seen that, Portlandia. I've seen some of it, but not yeah, a lot. put a bird on it. <laughs> so I do hear that a lot, <laughs> but I kind of love it, so. <laughs> Laura says that the story of anthology is about its sisters and what Madison teaches people as a community. I guess we always kind of start with the, the story of the two sisters. And, you know, we're essentially lifelong Madison residents. We moved here when I was a baby. It's just, it's like really intertwined with the city. We, you know, our family wasn't like rolling in money when we grew up. And so there was a lot of, the art that we received was from the community. You know, it was from UW Extension classes. It was from the Madison School and Community Rec. It was from the Bookmobile, oh, you know, the, the art cart. All of those things, those were the underpinnings of our creativity. And so for us, it's about being in this community and representing it to the people who are coming and visiting, mm -hmm. and then also giving back working in this community and giving back. So you grew up in Madison? Mm -hmm. What mm -hmm. side of town? West side. West side. Oh, yeah, I, I never know. would have known you. <laughs> <laughs> so. I think that being downtown has had like a, a mod moderating effect it, on yeah. being on either side. I know I have people from any side of town who are like, yeah, I never get downtown. And it's like equally inaccessible to everyone, mm -hmm. but it's equal. I like that mm -hmm. as kind of a meeting place. So when we first started out, we had a blog, and so I was writing quite a lot on that. This store really lends itself to the visual component, both yeah. of Instagram mm -hmm. and of Facebook, so that's been you know most successful for us. But that's one of the benefits of being in this location. And so like you're not having to work as hard to say to people, come on over here, come down, you know, like they're already here. Mm -hmm. I do some ads occasionally. Okay. Yeah, we have like a really small advertising budget, okay. but we do have one. Sarah says 11000 is trying to make people think differently about what they want to do make things a bit more personal instead of the same old thing. Being from a marketing background, mm -hmm. that I see a lot of people just try to straight out, a lot of people just don't know how to promote their business. And I think the trends that we're seeing now is that people get bombarded with marketing so much and just constant overstimulation from imagery and marketing and promotion and brands and everything every day, that people are really seeking truer connection and they're really seeking to support brands that feel aligned with their values. So it's important to me that we really have a why on why we're doing this and then I, I can be grounded by that on a regular basis. So like when I'm just sitting there typing away, figuring out how I'm gonna post on Instagram and I get burnt out, you can really sense it. I often, and I coach a lot of our members this way too, like when we do some of our branding workshops, it's like, you gotta know why you're doing this because there's 50 million different people doing the same exact thing. And there is a reason why you're doing this. There's a reason why you chose it. It's not just to make jewelry. It's not just to make a knife. There's something about that process that speaks to you. There's something about this that matters to you and should matter to the world. And so that's really how I try to tell the story of 11,000 is that we're not just trying to put more 
crap out into the world. We're actually trying to get people to consume differently. We're trying to get people to be conscious about what they fill their houses with. We're trying to get people to be conscious about what they're doing with their careers. Like if you want to do something different, if you want to make something with your own hands and try to sustain your family off of that, that's something you can try to do. And we're also trying to, which is a, is I think one of the biggest challenges is to create this local economy that also supports that. As much as they support the local food system, I think this whole handcrafted movement is very aligned with that. And we're trying to get people to understand that like filling your house with things that are made with stories is a really special thing. And it, it creates a place that makes you feel more connected okay. versus disconnected. And it's so much more fun to like bring people into your house and be like, they're like, where'd you get that? I'd be like, oh, I found this coolest thing from this person. Or, oh, I made that. You mm. know, like getting people to be more connected versus just mindlessly consuming. That's a tough one for me because I collect toys. <laughs> <laughs> we do some media outreach to some success. An influencer outreach is another key thing. I am starting to shift my efforts a lot more into email marketing versus social media because, you know, social media is often the thing that most of us use for marketing these days, but it's not the best asset that you have because you don't own it. You don't even actually have anyone's contact information and you're at, you're beholden to however the algorithms change or however the platform changes. So it's a good reminder for me who's like, a marketer, I'm like, oh, God, my, oh my gosh, what did I used to do when I didn't primarily market through social media? I'm like, oh yeah, I sent postcards. Like, mm. We do events for marketing too. Those can be time intensive, but I think it's a good time to go back to some of the traditional stuff. Too. Leah and Rebecca from Booth 121 say staying true to their roots as people who used to be on the other side of consignment is how they connect with local creators. Well, I think the fact that I have been in their shoes. I have had my things in consignment shops before I had the storefront. We want to keep the consignment rate at a reasonable rate, which is, and I can tell you this, we do 65% of the vendor sales. They get that. We keep 35, which is very, very fair. And the only reason we came to that agreement is because I knew that it wasn't fair to take 50% of, mm -hmm. of an artist's hard work. The other thing to keep in mind is when the artist is getting less by putting it into a store, they feel like they have to, and they do have to charge more mm. to get that value out of it. Well, you get to that point where if you're charging too much, no one's going to buy it. So it makes more sense for us to do the 65-35 split and have a better response to the items that are here. And we listen to our vendors, too, and yeah. we try to keep everything really fair, not bring in vendors that are doing the same item or jewelry. There's tons of jewelry makers out there. We, you know, we put a stop on taking on any more of them yeah. a long time ago because we, we knew if we oversaturated, no one's would sell. So we try to keep all of that in mind. Mm -hmm. They know we're real. We're not going to... Bullshit, um. And we have a really okay. awesome network of artists and vendors who know each other. Like, yeah. we have a bunch that are really good friends. Mm -hmm. So, like, no, you have to send this person over there. Get, you know, check her out. So we have a lot of vendors that are sending other artists our way. Mm -hmm. Not as much anymore. We think we got a lot of them. We kind of went fishing. But so we're also dealing with, like, this group of friends mm -hmm. that have known each other and worked together. And, and we've also connected a lot of people, which yeah. is great. And yeah. I love that. And yeah. We support a lot of the local craft shows by sponsoring their events. We use Facebook is really much the that. medium we use. I still haven't learned about like Instagram and Snapchat and all that <laughs> kind of crap. <laughs> I just, I, there's something with my aging mind that can't can't accept it or yeah. learn it but we will eventually and shortly after we started facebook's you had to pay to have more people see your posts so that kind of hit us hard and we had to start sticking money into advertising but we did that last holiday season which really spread the word yeah. and I, when we when we opened 2 years ago but the facebook page had 3000 okay. followers which i thought was like awesome mm -hmm. now we're up to over 11000 
So the word is definitely getting out. And I think the uniqueness of our items, the word of mouth is really helped. Tammy from Hatch Art House just listens to what people tell her they want to see and what they need. Hatch Art House is a, is a local business that caters to the neighborhood as well as the emerging artists. And we have an emphasis on reusing and upcycling materials. But that's not, you don't solely have to have your work, but you'll see that a lot of the work is on reused items, like Mm -hmm. a cabinet door or something. Mm -hmm. Hazel General Store is local on a larger scale with all USA vendors and small batch artisans, and we have an emphasis on vendors that give back as well. And now that I think of it, how did you come up with the name Hazel? We know the story behind Hatch. Well, I wanted it to be a general store, so we knew that part. And then I just really wanted a name that sounded well with, you know, with Hatch. I mean, they were going to be like sister stores. So I just, I I love the name. It's not a family name, but it is... I just thought it went well, and it's kind of an old-school name that's making a comeback. Mm -hmm. So it also sounded a lot like a modern-day general store, where general stores used to go to a general store to buy burlap and horse feed, where now you can go to the general store to buy a baby shower gift and greeting card. So, yeah, I just thought it was kind of one of those names that went well with Hatch and that they would look and sound great together. I, I, I feel like out of that explanation, you should at least have one bag of horse feed here. If somebody in the neighborhood has a horse, <laughs> let me know. I'll see what I can do. All right, all right. We have a lot of you know, people that find us through Instagram or Facebook. And I do have an online store for Hazel but it would be really difficult to have an online store for Hatch since it's mostly original work. So I'd say a lot of word of mouth and we've been lucky enough to have some good press and whenever something like that happens, it's just a godsend. It's just awesome because it'll reach another group of people that may not have known we were here. Are are you using an online cart system? Oh, uh, we use Shopify. You are using Shopify, okay. I like that one, those are good. Anastasia owes all of her popularity for Confectionique to people who just simply talk about what she does on Facebook and by trying to stay in contact with those people once they go to her shop. We are completely Facebook driven, I social media driven, and it's pretty much always been that way and really? word of mouth. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. We do collect emails for people who don't like social media. And so we'll do, right. we try not to bug people on email. And so we send out the sneak peek information and then we alert people when if we're doing anything special here through email. But otherwise, we hand out a market card and it lists all the dates that were open for the year. So people know ahead of time. We give those out at the begin at the end of every year for the next. Mm-hmm. And then it's it's word of mouth and mainly Facebook mm-hmm. and it's customers that love it here. So they gather a bunch of their friends and bring them. It's remarkable what the customers have done to help us keep going. I think you were telling me that somehow my event showed up on your page. No, what, so so what it was is on our Facebook page, there's a way that you can do audience insights and it will say the people that like your page also like this. Oh. And yours was one of them that sh- one that showed up as one of the markets in town that people liked. That's how I'm finding these places I'm talking to. I'm like, I want to talk to places that the people mm-hmm. are interested in. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. that was one of the reasons why I wanted to talk to you. Mm-hmm. And also because I, I was just like, what's this place? <laughs> this is awesome. That's what a lot of people <laughs> say. What is this place? We'll get calls on the phone and say, I'm just on Airport Road and I want to make sure you're inside the airport. (laughs) Yep. Tammy says that she also owes the popularity of Bohemian Bobble to word of mouth. Her own. I think I talk a lot. (laughs) Well, that's perfect for this. Yeah. I think when somebody comes into my booth, I'm pretty good at chatting them up and not in an aggressive way, Mm -hmm. but I like to talk about my work and I like I just like connecting with people. So I think that has given me a huge edge. Jewelry is... The jewelry world is pretty competitive, especially at the level that I'm at, which is like I'm not 
a metalsmith or a silversmith. I'm not in all the fine art shows. I'm just doing the street festivals and the pop-ups and whatever. And there's a lot of us out there mm. doing, uh, making jewelry. So I think one of the things that's made me successful is that my customers keep coming back. And I think part of it is because I strike up a relationship with them. Mm -hmm. And I'm always doing something new. Like every time you come see me, there'll be something new, a new type of design or a new item that you didn't see last time. I don't like to pay to advertise. No? I don't know if it works. And okay. I don't want to spend the money to find out. I mean, I will boost posts on Facebook, so I'll spend money to do that. I'll spend money to get flyers printed and things like that. But I don't typically take out ads in papers or anything like that. A lot, so much of it is word of mouth. Mm -hmm. okay. And I've been working that way for 20 years. Kyle calls Pieces Unimagined a furniture store first and then elaborates what type of furniture store to expect. When people just ask me what I do, I'm like, I sell industrial modern furniture and personal effects, mm -hmm. and accents, things with an edge. You know, so we're not like an antique store. We have right. some vintage, you know, we're not a craft store, but we have some crafts, you know. Mm -hmm. But it's all distinctive, leaning into the edgy, steampunk neighborhood, harsher, maybe more masculine. Yeah. You know, so like there's a business called Cozy Home in town. Uh, they're over on Monona Drive. Oh, I'm much familiar. And she's a consignment shop. We know we send each other... Uh, customers because she's the soft side, I'm the hard side. <laughs> okay, all right. And so when people have things that are a little too harsh for her, she sends them over here. And vice versa, if they have s stuff that's too soft, we send them there. I like that kind of, I hate to use the word synergy because it sounds so yes. corporate-like, but eh, that's, that's but it, nice. But it works. But that doesn't mean she won't keep some hard stuff over there, and, and we do need soft stuff over here desperately sometimes. Yeah. You know, but it has to fit. It can't be... Grandma's curio cabinet, you yeah. know, or anything like that. When I tell people about this place, and I was wondering if you were going to say steampunk or not, because I didn't know if that would be the right thing to call it. I know that's a very specific style. My answer is usually just, oh, it's this really cool place. Well, that's not descriptive enough. No, it's really not. <laughs> but a lot of people use that term. We lost our steampunk edge. It was supposed to be a lot more steampunk. But furniture and furniture building became so much of a consumption for me that steampunk takes effort. Yeah. And you have to find really, really good artists, and that's not cheap either. Mm -hmm. And so you'll see vestiges of some true steampunk over there, but not, I don't know. Let alone it being that specific, locally it's probably got to be hard to source as well, I would imagine. Right. Yeah. Yep. We didn't do anything at first. We, okay. I did a soft opening. I was supposed to open, you know, sometime in August or September yeah. of two years ago. And I got in here it, July 10th, and I just flipped the open sign. And ever since then, it's just been insane. I was supposed to not hire anybody for a year, and I had to hire somebody in two months, and then in four months, another person. And now, now we're up to, like, three employees. Wow. And so... That was going on for the first year and a half, and now we're finally doing a lot of paper advertising. We did a advertising blitz in the past three months, and so we did uh, all the mailers that go to everybody's house, you know, and anybody who moves in nude gets a, a, a card. Cap Times, these magazines, yeah. you know, that stuff. So we did a lot of that, and then we're going to cease that and then see what happens. And oh. see if it did anything. So we're just going to say no to virtually all paper advertising. And then we're going to shift all our energy over into social media mm -hmm. and then see what that's going to do. So we're in the middle of discovering what that means. But word of mouth is really the main thing you know, mm -hmm. um, for us. It I like that strategy, though. Yeah, I don't know. Might work, might not. <laughs> right. You but know. still, it's like throw it on there and see if it sticks. John likes the word of mouth created from the musical acts that he has performed at Mother Fool's Coffee House. The normal Facebook account, we use Twitter every day to put out our soup of the day. One thing that I realized when we first opened is that by booking diverse music in here, lots of people's friends learn about it, you know, all the yeah. people in the band. You know, so that was something that when we first started, we did a lot of. The last couple of years, I haven't been doing shows as regularly, and that's largely a function of two things. In 2008, when everything crashed, 
what we saw here is way less touring musicians uh, at, at this level. Mm -hmm. And I think it just was no longer economically viable. You know, so we kind of had a reduction in supply. And then the last couple of years, it's been way harder to staff consistently than it used to be. Mm -hmm. You know, so we're finally, I think, getting over that hurdle. So I'm going to start scheduling more shows here. And I know that that will help get the word of mouth out, you know, because then in WRT, they're saying your name every couple hours, you know, when they yeah. do the show roundup and it's listed in the SMS. You know, it's like, I think that's a real key. I think it's also good when artists have receptions here. We offer all the artists a chance at a reception, about half of them do. Mm. When they do, that's great. And, you know, all of a sudden we're introducing ourselves to a whole bunch of new people when their friends come. Yeah. You know, so I always look at those sort of events as real opportunities, just show people a good time and hopefully they come back once a week or make it part of their routine or a place that they bring out of town friends or I want one person out of every show one audience member to just become a regular mm -hmm. you know and then it takes care of itself when I started this show I was just using Facebook because I knew how to advertise already, and it was easy for me. But I'm trying to branch out, trying to get out of my own comfort zone of protection that I've created from behind my laptop. I'm getting out and meeting people. One of the comic blog posts I do recently was about how I was thinking about participating in a pop-up. And Tammy from Bohemian Bobble actually reached out to me when she saw it and said that she'd help hook me up. So we'll see where that goes. I'm thinking of hand-making books out of my comic blog for that. If you want to know more about the things that I'm doing outside of this show and to keep in touch, you should sign up for my email list over at AmericanBandito.com slash subscribe, which is also where you can subscribe to the show while you're there. The music for the show is by Romcom, and you can hear more of that at AmericanBandito.com slash music. Next week, I'll be asking another question from this group of Madison creatives. So until then, so long. Mm -hmm.